Now, the Green Energy Africa Summit has launched the Energy Investment Village, or EIV. It is an exciting deal-pitching event for African clean tech startups and energy projects. Now, this allows emerging African energy businesses to be part of the major event taking place in Cape Town later this year. This is to fast-track energy independence and, of course, accelerate energy shortages by empowering tech startups in the sector. For more on this, I'm joined by Freeport Saldana CEO Kashifa Bierkes. Thank you so much, Kashifa. Um, you know, let's start with the EIV playing this middleman role between, you know, startup and, of course, investors. Um, from what you've seen so far, this is the second time around that this event is taking place. How is global investor interest when it comes to African startups, especially when it comes to green energy? Yeah. No, thank you for the opportunity and uh, and, and having us on the show. Um, so it's a good question. Uh, I think that uh, what we're seeing is certainly that there is such a big role for a platform such as the Energy Investment Village to take place. What we see from data um, that we follow that certainly actually investments into early stage uh, innovation projects, startups, has actually slowed down. If you look at uh, January to April of 2023 compared to the same period in 2022. And what this says is that we need to raise the profile of African tech startups more. And, and this is the platform that we are creating at the Green Energy um, Africa Summit. Hmm. Now, how exactly does this work? Um, I know it's a, it's a pitching style type event, and I've heard of lines then type pitching as well. Is that um, what basically takes place mm -hmm. at these events? Yeah. So... Um, the event culminates in the pitching uh, competition, if you will, in October at the at the summit. But the process that we are following now and, that, and the phase that we're in is an open call for African tech startups in the energy sector to apply. Uh, the closing date for that is the 12th of June. Uh, we will be shortlisting uh, applica applicants uh, over the course of June, and then they actually get two months of intense business and pitch preparation uh, um, skills and training to prepare themselves for the pitching competition. Mm. And so in October, you'll see the shortlisted candidates present their business cases and they call for investment to an audience of judges that are uh, partners and, and sponsors uh, in, this, uh, in, the, in the investment village, as well as an audience of local and international investors was sitting in and listening in and seeing if they can find a, de find a deal, find a partner that suits their uh, uh, portfolio. Mm. And talking about that, you know, last year's event was a success. Um, and the winner there, I think it's Brayfoil Technologies. Um, yep. what's, what's, a, what's the journey been like for them after winning last year's um, event? Yeah. It was, it was, it was nerve-wracking for all of us involved because it was the inaugural event. And to put on such a uh, quite a prestigious uh, uh, summit as uh, at the CTI and, and the venue, the CTICC, and I must say it was only stand, it was standing room only at the event. And Brayfall won certainly the, the the pitching competition. They received a cash prize from FNB, and they are now able to actually uh, complete the work of piloting the, the their technology. And it's quite interesting is that. They've developed an innovative biomimicry uh, design for a wind turbine based on um, the wings of an uh, on African birds of prey. So they're in the workshops completing their pilot. There were a few other uh, successful uh, um, pitches done, companies done. So one of them is the Charge, who has been invited to join the JSC Accelerator program. Another one is Hydrofuels. Um, and they have been enrolled in Sussel's Enterprise Supply Development Program. And then lastly, Karen Energy, who actually already has a proof of concept, a green hydrogen project in Fredendal in the Western Cape, and they were offered a six-month mentorship uh, by the JSE. Hmm. So these companies are taking these prizes, taking these opportunities, building their business cases, uh, uh, building pilots, um, and, and uh, building their products. Out mm. further. And Kashiva, of course, it is important to elevate black owned businesses when it comes to um, this booming green energy um, sector. Yeah. 
Oh, certainly. So one of the partners in the Energy Investment Village is the African uh, Federation of Project Developers, as well as Anza Capital. And Anza Capital is well known as an investment firm that targets tech startups in Africa with a gender-inclusive and transformation uh, uh, base. So, and and the AFIDA, the um, the Association of a uh, African Project Developers, specifically support the transformation of, of, of opportunities and supporting project developers to reach financial close on their, on their, on their projects, on, on their ventures. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very much in line with our role as the special economic zone of transformative uh, economic development and growth. And Koshva, I mean, you, you are the CEO of uh, Freeport Saldana, so I would like to talk to you about South Africa's um, transition to uh, green energy. I mean, it is imminent for us, um, or the just energy transition, if you'd like to call it that. Um, there's been a lot of focus purely on solar, um, specifically when it comes to our transition um, to greener energy. Mm -hmm. How important is it to, for us to look, rather look at a, a mix of energy, or an energy mix, as we call it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's so important, uh, and it's a point that cannot be overlooked. We have immense infrastructure uh, in South Africa in our energy, in our electricity network. This is a transition, and we will not be able to. No country would want to move over um, overnight, and I think also if you look at the mix of energy demand needs, uh, just from an industrial perspective, we know that heavy industry would probably still require an element of gas um, in, in, as a fuel into the industrial processes uh, to balance out potential other lower carbon fuel inputs that they use. And this is because of the industrial process that takes place there and the efficiencies that can be gained by that. Um, we certainly see a diverse mix of project developers um, in Saldana and I'm, and I'm certain all over the country in, in the other special economic zones. Hmm. I think that uh, it's very important that we support these projects and, and flesh out the competitive advantage and the enabling environment that they would require mm. uh, to, to realize them. Yeah. And, and lastly, um, I want to talk about green hydrogen specifically as well. I know that Freeport Saldana is also involved there in, in some way. And I know there's projects in Bukhubai and in the Northern Cape, if I'm not mistaken. Um, how can we as South Africa benefit from, you know, the use of, of green hydrogen? And what exactly is that? And what does it mean for us? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know that there's quite there's quite a lot of uh, discussion on this, but if one looks at hydrogen itself as a molecule, and South Africa uh, through Sassel is one of the largest producers of grey hydrogen, and it's called grey because it comes from a coal uh, um, carbon base, um, and so transitioning to green hydrogen means that the energy that you use in order to produce that molecule comes from renewable energy sources, so like solar um, and wind. And for me, the argument of the, 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 the location of green hydrogen sits squarely in those hard to abate sectors, those industrial sectors. Where you uh, can electrify, you must directly from the grid. But where you have a massive industrial offtake or industrial process taking place, green hydrogen can be the fuel that would lower your carbon emissions, reduce your carbon emissions, as well as give you that same energy intensity that you require in your, in, in your industrial process. And you're quite right. Buhubai is a uh, is is one of the hydrogen hubs. And actually, just last year, the two premiers of the Northern Cape and the Western Cape signed a heads of agreement to actually uh, coordinate, uh, help support and strengthen the coordination of the Saldana uh, hydrogen cluster, as well as the Bukhubai hydrogen cluster, because we see the benefits of working together, um, the synergies that we can bring uh, to, to each other in this new market, in this emerging market.
Um, I think for Saldana specifically, you have the mothballed steel mill that's there, and uh, we are working with uh, the, the steel mill uh, as well as other project developers to, to, to find a way of restarting the steel mill, bringing those jobs back, but on a green, lower carbon basis that makes their product that they uh, will produce more sustainable and competitive in the global market. You also have an existing port in Saldana where you have bulk carriers coming in and, uh, and, and exporting iron ore and manganese. The decarbonization of shipping is also another sector. And so the, the discussion and the focus is on how can, how can Saldana participate in green uh, bunkers green lower, lower carbon bunker fuels as the fuel uh, um, and the shipping industry transitions over time. Mm. And then, I mean, the, I think if you consider um, where we are uh, and being in the Western Cape, yeah. once you have green hydrogen, you have the ability to have ammonia and ammonia is a key input and need for fertilizers. And I think mm. that in terms of food security for South Africa yeah. going forward, and sustainable food supply, this can also play yeah. a, vi a vital role. And I know that other regions are also looking at this as well. Mm, fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Kashifa Bekas, that is uh, the Freeport Saldana CEO. Um, of course, very important that you mentioned there, those job creations um, that, that you know, this green energy or green hydrogen projects can bring is very important as we've seen the latest figures. Um, but moving on.